Hey everyone, so this is a 2021 Audi Q5 um, in florette silver. Um, as many of you know, if you're familiar with the channel, um, I like to film every time I get a service loaner um, to add some variety to the channel. So while my florette silver Q5 with a black interior is in for service, I have a florette silver Q5 with a black interior. <laughs> you don't get that kind of variety everywhere. So anyway, um, Let's just start with the usual walk around stuff. It's horrible lighting right now in the sun, I apologize. These are, oh God, I think they're 19s. Yeah, 235, 55R 19s. Um, LED headlights. This one has adaptive cruise control. Um, those are not fog lights, those are the ACC sensors. Um, the fog lights are um, the all weather lights that are built into the beam here. They kind of, they're like cornering lights. Um, parking sensors in the front. Uh, what else? Um, you know, turn signal mirrors, of course, usual stuff. And as usual with Audis, the blind spot is right there. The big orange light that lights up. I like it there instead of in the glass. It shows up to me a little bit easier that way. And of course, you have the full um, LED tail lights. There, let's get in the shade. That helps a little bit. Uh, key. Or you have your dynamic turn signals and this is full of the you know the roof bars and stuff so uh a decent amount of cargo area is illuminated in led you can close or close and lock and down here of course you have not real i know i wouldn't even call those fake exhaust they're little styling elements the real exhaust is i don't know right there there you go there's two outlets at least on it. We are park sensors, of course. Um, you know, this generation of Q5 was facelifted for this year. They're all S line now, I think, for 2022, but this is just a 2021. I haven't found the window sticker. I don't think it's in this one. So this should be a premium plus um, without nav. It does have the B&O stereo though, which sounds pretty good. It does have this natural um, grained, uh, wood inlay, which I kind of like. A um, little bit of stitching on the door here. The interior plastics are okay. They do, they look, they're not fantastic everywhere, but overall a decently premium feeling interior. Um, I think the Volvo XC60 comes across a little bit nicer in terms of materials and design, but the gauge cluster in these is a little bit crisper. Um, we have some, a couple speakers up there. We have a 12 way power driver's seat. The passenger seat has the same range of motion with the exception of there is no lumbar controls on the passenger seat. Um, all weather light controls, rear fogs. You do have a large deep um, padded area there. Adaptive cruise control. Um, tel telescopic steering column manual, of course. Um, you know, memory seats, all that fun stuff. And now that it's, uh, you know, the updated Q5, there is no more MMI control. I think everybody knows that by now. So they decided to just literally cut a hole where the MMI wheel used to be. And pretty much just my wallet fits there. I don't know what else you'd do with it. Um, and they have this huge panel blocks around, which will look disgusting immediately. Um, some more stitching there, which looks pretty nice. The steering wheel is actually pretty nice too. Very high resolution screen. This one does not have nav and you get the full size screen, which I kind of like. Um, Tri-Zone Auto Climate. This one has a heated steering wheel, but no heated rear seats. Uh, panoramic sunroof, which is nice. Um, you know, so let's just start it up, I guess. Front brake, and we'll start it up. So see, really crisp virtual cockpit. I like how they don't punish you by giving you a crappier screen for not having nav in the Q5. So you get the same high resolution screen as the nav ones there, and the same full size screen. Uh, right here as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do still wish I had an MMI wheel though, but very high resolution, very easy to use and to navigate. <laughs> I still wish I had a wheel though, as you can see. Um, and you know, all your you know usual controls are in here. This is how I have it set up. I have it in individual mode, and I have it in balanced and support for the steering. Um, won't go too far in depth there. Climate controls are nice. These are the cool ones where if you, they're um, heat sensitive, you know, so you touch your finger over it and it'll give you a little preview of what your different options are. 
um, so that's kind of fun. Drive select down here, you can go up and down, auto start, stop, on and off, let's turn that off immediately. Uh, trash control on and off, um, park distance control, hill descent control, and this just turns the screen off. I'm assuming the tap to turn it on goes away. Yeah, it does. Um, so the days of Audi screens folding in the dash are long gone. Uh, you know, you guys have seen a shifter forever. I have a video on YouTube of how the shifter works with almost 2 million views on it. Um, actually, another cool thing, put it in manual mode, put it in park, it goes back over. Very exciting. Um, so yeah, useless storage cubby there, useless storage cubby there, USB-A, uh, filthy, disgusting cup holders, which all kinds of Karens have already spilled coffee in. There is a wireless pad you can slide here. There's a USB-C in here. Um, you can ratchet this to different positions, which is really nice. I love that about Volkswagen Audi cars. It makes finding a comfortable position very easy. These seats are a little softer than I remember them being in this generation, but they're a little flat, but I personally can get pretty comfortable in them. Um, call me biased if you want, but I do tend to like the seats in my generation Q5 a little bit better. Um, I also like the steering. The steering in mine is very heavy because it has the 20 inch wheels. Um, even in the most, even in the heaviest setting, um, the steering in this is pretty, uh, it's pretty light and loose. One big improvement in this generation of the Audi Q5, um, so 2018 and up, is the brakes. I think I say that in pretty much every video that I do of these vehicles. Um, the brakes are noticeably more responsive in this generation compared to mine, which just somewhat gives you the pedal feel of trying to stop a runaway Turkish prison. Um, it just feels like a big, heavy car. But this, the brakes are very responsive, and I like that about them a lot. Um, because normally I'm pretty cynical about, you know, the post diesel gate uh, Volkswagen Audi cars. You can just tell the interiors are just a just a half step behind where they used to be. Um, obviously not in terms of technology, but just the overall materials, quality, fit and finish. It's all still very solid, but you know they're, they're certainly competitive. But um, if you're used to the older stuff, it just feels like you're losing out a little bit. But certainly, you know, this car is very quiet. It's very smooth. It gets the job done. It does have enough power. The only thing that kind of sucks is if you're not in a sport mode and you're trying to, I don't know, move, for example. Like, my foot feels like it's pretty far in the gas pedal. It's just camping out in a high gear. Steering column's vibrating, and you're just barely creeping forward. Let's not crash into the male person. Um, so there is no escaping the fact that this is a four-cylinder engine. Um, under acceleration and load, it's quiet and smooth, but it has no problem sending I'm a four-cylinder vibes through the steering column, and that really irritates me <laughs> uh, more than it probably should, um, considering that it's 2021 and everything has a four-cylinder engine. So if that's going to drive you nuts, get the SQ5. It still has a three-liter V6 um, because this thing just has no torque down low. Um, It does ultimately have enough power, but the way it's engineered, if you're not in a sport mode, it just feels kind of sluggish, and it's annoying. Come on, let's go. I'm really stepping into it now, and it is just not downshifting. Come on! Uh, for, again, for most people, it's probably fine, but I'm used to driving a car with 155 more pound-feet of torque than this one, because uh, the, the old 3-liter TDIs were 428 pound-feet of torque, and they just sail forward in any gear, any RPM. So, even though this can go 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds, you wouldn't notice it just driving it around normally. But, so... It's fine, you know, just for cruising around. It doesn't, you can pass people and stuff. But again, if you're used to the way things used to be like I am, I know I keep banging on about that, it will feel a little slow. But otherwise, the ride quality is really good. I do wish the steering was a little heavier. Um, the fuel economy, usually when I get these as service loaders, I get about 24 miles per gallon with them which is decent for how big it is, I guess. Obviously, they'll do better on the highway, but just driving around town and kind of combined driving 
That's how I tend to fare with them. Uh, the Bang & Olufsen stereo is really good. Um, I was able to tune that in nicely. These have wireless CarPlay, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, as the Audi Q5 has always been, it's kind of the jack of all trades. Not really a master of anything, but that's, that tends to be Audi's MO when they go out designing stuff. They're overall very competent vehicles, but they don't tend to, you know, specialize particularly in any one area. Like, I mean, they kind of used to with interiors. It's right now, I think it's the technology. And then like, this is still the best virtual cockpit in the business, I think. Um, so they are still kind of a tour de force on the tech front, uh, at least for interior technology. Winter's almost here, which means we're going to be in the heart of Quattro. You can see the alignment is already off on this car. I don't know what the hell people do to these goddamn things. Um, excuse my French, I'm very fluent in it. Um, every time I get one of these, it's disgustingly filthy. I don't know what people do in these things. Um, don't read too much into that. Um, but look, the alignment's way off. This car only has 5,000 miles on it. Now, I never torture these things, because I think that's mean to do even though it's not my car, but I cleaned the windshield, I cleaned all the piano black, it's just, what do people do in their vehicles? It just drives me insane. People have no respect for anything at all. But whatever. Um, I'm just glad they actually got a service loader because there's like no cars anywhere in the world. Thank you, COVID. But, um... I won't keep droning on forever. Those are my initial impressions, again, of the Q5. You guys have seen videos of this generation before. Um, I hope that was somewhat informative. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Um, to wrap it up, I would personally just get the SQ5. Again, it's not because I'm power hungry. Well, I am power hungry. But just in terms of getting away from that whole four-cylinder vibration thing, I really wish they could have engineered that out or at least make it want to downshift a little bit sooner. It's fine most of the time, really, it is but it just happens once in a while and it bugs me and it shouldn't for a car that's, you know, in the premium segment. So thanks for sticking around and um, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks, bye. Okay, now I know we're not in sport mode, but we are in dynamic mode. It's a dynamic drive. We're still at about 1200 RPM at 50 miles an hour. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna start pushing my foot farther and farther and farther farther and farther. I'm still pushed. There we go. <laughs> it's not very far, but still, if you're just trying to be smooth with it, if you poke it, see, it goes fine. But, you know, just something to keep in mind. Like I said, it's not horrendous. It just kind of bugs me. <laughs> I wanted to point it out. So uh, that's it. See you guys later.